Hello again, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Weka classifiers from your Java source code. Um, I'll be showing you how to build a naive base classifier, a decision tree classifier, and one that is a support vector machines classifier. Remember to check the documentation, there's a large list of classifiers in Weka, you can read about them and remember to check the again very large list of functions or methods that are uh, there for us to use and that can be very useful for your research or for your application. Now I'm going to be assuming that you understand at least how these algorithms work. If you don't then please go back to my YouTube channel and I have many videos explaining how several uh, classification algorithms work. I think uh, the playlist is called data mining algorithms or something like that. So enough talking, let's go straight to the code or to the documentation. Well, let's have a look at the documentation first. So let's go to the documentation, weka.classifiers, and then weka.classifiers.base, and there we'll find um, naive base, that's base net, base networks, and this is a naive base, and you can read here, class for a naive, cla naive base classifier using estimator classes, numeric estimator precision values are chosen based on uh, analysis of the training data and so on and so forth there's an um, uh, 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 article that you can read and um, you have options there if you want to set up some options and then again the large list of very useful methods in this classifier one interesting one actually is called capabilities uh, they get to, to get the classifiers capabilities and I, I believe it's actually that one is uh, yeah so the, I'm sorry the first one we need to be familiar with is the build classifier method so we create a new object of that classifier and then we use build classifier we pass it the instances object to generate the classifier but there's one called uh, uh, I think print capabilities we'll have a look at that which will give us a brief description of the types of uh, uh, data that the classifier can Handle. So let's go to the code. I've prepared a small class here called classification.java. As usual, we have our package. We import the required classes. Notice here weka.classifiers.base.naive base. And then we import or load the data set. Now I'm using the uh, very famous iris data set. This one actually comes with Weka when you download Weka. When we build the classifier, we need to explicitly say which column or which field is the class field and with this line of code here we tell it that the, the, la the last column is the class field so we say data set for a method a method from the class instances data set dot set class index and then data set dot number of attributes minus one so that tells us is the last column or the last field in the data set so we set the class index and then we create and build a classifier we say naive base nb equals naive base new naive base and then build classifier and we pass it the data set the instance object now if we run that it should work nicely and then what, what i've done here is i'm using the method i'm calling the method get capabilities dot to string so to get a list of the capabilities of this classifier and there it tells us capabilities it can handle nominal attributes binary attributes and so on and so forth and then even for the class value it can handle normal class or binary class or even missing class values notice it doesn't say it can handle um, um, numeric class so if you remember our QDB QDB one where all the attributes are, uh, are, are um, numeric if I execute this then it will generate an error because classifier or neighbors cannot handle numeric class maybe here this is uh, a typical uh, or, or an ideal time or an ideal situation to do some pre-processing maybe to discretize attributes or something like that as we learned before uh, another one that we can uh, experiment with maybe is SM, the SMO classifier which is from uh, which is um, support vector machines so we can open that create SMO and just build classifier using data set or maybe the J48 which is for decision trees we can read about the two of them uh, we need to import G J48 of course and if you give me a second let's print out the capabilities of 
all of them for this one and for this one and here we need to say SVM the instance name for SMO and there we need to say tree for that in fact in tree we do a system printout and there's a nice function in tree that's not nice method in tree which is called dot graph and the graph this will print out a textual representation of the tree that uh, is built from that data set so if I execute these then you can see there that is printing this is these are the capabilities of the first class naive base second class the SMO and the decision tree and then here we are having this digraph of the J48 class for this decision tree this is just a textual representation of the tree that it has built from here and for to uh, read more about these classes again we go back to the, to the documentation so java.classifiers um, now what, what, what we want is for the tree is java.classifiers.trees and then we find the j48 it has several options if we want it unpruned then we use the minus u uh, uh, option or if it's pruned then we give it pruning confidence minimum number of instances per leaf things like that yes several options and as I said you can as I said before you can read about it uh, in this article so this is a class for generating a pruned or unpruned C point C point four point five decision tree for the SMO um, it's in classifiers dot functions so we go to classifiers dot functions and then we find SMO there at the bottom as you can see and then again we can read about it it implements John Plant's sequential, sequential mini, minimal optimization algorithm for training a support vector classifier. So to set the options, actually, I, I'm sure I've, I've shown you how to set options. Uh, if not, yeah, I've shown you when we use the discretization, the, the idea is exactly the same for the classifiers. So let's do one for the tree, for example. Let's just create quickly uh, options for the decision tree maybe just one option which is one will say options of zero equals minus u to say it's unpruned and then before we build the classifier we need to say tree dot set options and then we give it the options string the semicolon and that's it we save and execute and things should be fine uh, one more thing maybe we can do if we have another look here uh, using the confidence so the confidence the tree needs to be pruned so we cancel that so we just let's set the confidence uh, we need two values now in our options string because we need the, the minus C and then we need to pass the value which is by default is 0 0.25 but maybe we can say 0 0.11 or something like that yeah save and run uh, now it's complaining for some reason let's have a look why is it why it's complaining yes options zero yeah options of zero and options of one so the first and second elements of the array <coughs> and it's running nicely maybe we can do the minimum number of objects which is uh, the minus m so minus m and a value of course now we need four elements in the options array the first and second are for the confidence the third and fourth are for the uh, minimum number of objects this this needs to be an integer value so maybe you can say three or something like that i think the default is what two yeah the minimum the minimum number of instances per leaf is default is two so let's set to three to three and then execute and it should be fine I hope that makes sense so that's how you use a classifier read the functions or the methods in there as I said they are very nice ones for example we can save the classify object to a file and then transfer it maybe to another computer or, or a laptop or even our phone and then load it and use it without having to build it again but I will be showing you that in another video thank you very much for watching now and I'll see you next time